honeys, welcome to another video. It's me, Ria. Uh, if you don't know me, my name is Ria Sabine. I'm a makeup artist and I'm here to teach you guys a little bit more about makeup. Uh, whether you're a makeup artist, a makeup enthusiast, a lover or a beginner makeup, a <laughs> beginner at makeup, um, I'd love to be able to teach you something. So today we experimented with a bit of color and some products that you maybe would not have thought to have used before. We are gonna play with some blush, some lipstick and pretty much use everything except for eyeshadow on our eyes eyes nearly so yeah stay tuned keep on watching and yeah all right so I've already got my base on I, I didn't feel the need to film it because I did the exact same thing that I did in my last video in my last video I spoke a little bit about how I was picking red tones for my eyes and how that made my green eyes look even better so I wanted to speak a little bit today about what I think I love for other colored eyes such as blue eyes and brown eyes my favorite color at the moment for blue eyes is pink and peach colors and oranges when I'm picking my colors for my client I think of the color wheel which is like I think every makeup artist's religion when I'm picking a color I usually want to go for their complementary slash opposite color so for me my eyes being on the green side I try to go for red and orange because it is the complete opposite to green and that is what's going to make green look so much greener and brighter so for blue when you think about blue, the opposite color is orange. So when you think about those orange, peachy, pink tones, they make blues look incredible. And that's not to say that people with blue eyes can't wear other colors or can't wear blues or purples or reds or anything. Just for me, and I think what a lot of other people will find is that pink colors and peach and orange colors look amazing. And I think pink is such an on-trend color right now for eyeshadow. Oh, so many people are asking for pink eyeshadow looks at the moment more than I've ever seen. For my brown eye beauties, I feel like you can get away with everything and anything. You've got dark eyes that complement absolutely everything. Your dark eyes are gonna be the contrast to every color. And I love that, you are so <laughs> lucky for that. I feel like people with brown eyes give themselves a bad rap. They're like, oh, it's boring. I wish I had blue eyes, they're a cool color. They're just dark. No, I love brown eyes, I love them. So brown eyes, you can get away with nearly anything, I think, but today I'm gonna show you some ways you can use pink in your eye makeup, especially for my blue-eyed babies, and that doesn't exclude any of my green-eyed girls either. You can definitely go for pinks as well. That's still a warm color that's gonna make green eyes look great too. I wanted to get a bit, experiment a bit, a bit experimental with this look. Until recently when pink became super popular, I hardly had any pink eyeshadows in my kit. I maybe would have one pink and a bright palette. I've got a few palettes here that seem to really hone in on the pink tones, especially the peach palette by Too Faced is a big one. There's so many of those beautiful colors for blue eyes. So if you're a blue eyed girl, I think this palette or anything from that peach range that Too Faced has done will really suit you. And I thought I quickly grabbed my James Charles palette you can't tell by the amount of stuff on it, it's obviously one of my go-tos. Obviously this one's got some pinks in it and stuff, so this is probably when I first started seeing pinks in my kit, in these big colourful packs like this. I never really came across peach palettes and stuff until maybe Too Faced did it. So when I was first trying to experiment with pinks, when it became such a big fad, I went for my blushes and my lipsticks. Like this is what I love about makeup. It is such a multifaceted tool. You don't have to just use blush on your cheeks. You don't just have to put lipstick on your lips. There are no rules. So I've picked up some of my pink products. So I've got a two blushes. This one is just from Essence. It's a little pink one, which is really cute. And it's a matte one. The Chi Chi blush, the Viva La, Viva, the Viva La Diva blushes. So these ones have got your shimmer in them. And then another one is a pink lipstick. And obviously we've got so many varieties of pink lipsticks. You've got nudie pinks, you've got bright pinks, but I've picked up a bright pink. I don't go for this often, it's more when I'm being creative, but I've got this little bright pink one from Mecca, which I think was just like a sample. Um, and this one is the Mecca brand, the pop of pout lipstick in the shade Born a Bombshell. So I'm gonna try and incorporate some of these into my looks today and try and show you how you don't have to just use one tool for one thing. Cause I know that if you're starting out in makeup, you're probably not gonna have all the makeup that your friends have or makeup artists have. You're gonna have your few little staple items that you've been using for ages and stick with them. And I know when I was first starting out with makeup and it was my big dream to be a makeup artist, I was doing some of the most makeshift things to get by. I was using like talcum powder to set my foundation. I would like 
get like body moisturizer and like a foundation that was too dark so I can make it fit me like when you're flogging your mum's foundation that dream matte mousse baby still do this trick but I was always like religiously I would like comb my eyebrows up with hairspray and set my face with hairspray like I know that you guys probably don't have everything at your disposal so that's why I want to try and use things that you might already have in your kit so you don't have to go out and buy a new pink eyeshadow palette I haven't actually <laughs> decided what I'm gonna do though I already have my eyeshadow base on I didn't do it very heavy today because I want this look to be quite soft I just used the LA Girl Pro Concealer in the fairest shade again and it does crease I don't know if you, as I was speaking to you, you probably noticed it was creasing but um, it does begin, it sets once you get your eyeshadows on. So I'm thinking I'm going to be a little bit bold. I might actually start with the lipstick. I think the best place to start is with a palette or on the back of your hand. Put the product on there and warm it up. So I'm just going to start by on the back of my hand. I think the back of your hand is best if you're just doing this look on yourself because that warmth on the back of your hand is priceless. But obviously if you are working, you'll be doing it on a palette. So I've got the six plus brushes again out, the fluffy shady brushes. So I'm just working off the back of my head and you can see it's loading up my brush nicely. And like I said yesterday, if you are unsure on a colour of how bright it's going to be, start me out a corner because if that gets bright or too dark, you should usually be okay. So I'm going to start out here and it does have that sort of cream texture to it, but I think we will be able to set that with a bit of our blush or eyeshadow. And so I'm stippling it on because obviously this isn't going to blend the same way a powder will. If you are going to invest in anything for your makeup kit and if you're just beginning, good, not necessarily expensive brushes, but good brushes are essential. And I definitely recommend starting with just having some brushes such as this one, like a shader brush, like the Matte 217. You can Google some dupes. Like I have probably up to six of like this exact style of brush in my kit because I could create whole looks with probably just these brushes. So stippling it on because it's not going to blend like a regular eyeshadow. We've got to be pretty light handed and just stipple. Can't really get that same windshield wiper motion. You've got to really pack it on and stipple it. You can see I'm getting that nice elongated shape again. And I think getting that depth in that outer V of the eye is always really complimentary no matter who you are. Because again, it creates that beautiful cat eye elongated sort of shape. And I'm just slowly buffing out those edges. I love pink soft looks. It always makes me feel like it's springtime. I'm just slowly blending that into the inner corner a bit more. I love that looks really soft and diffused. So I'm going to go do the other eye. All right, I'm super happy with how that looks. I honestly feel like you could almost leave a look at this and maybe a bit of a wash of a neutral color or something on your lid to just set, set it in place. So it's a little bit tacky to the texture, but I think it's no more tacky than what my concealer was. So I'm just gonna be like super experimental here and I'm gonna go into the matte blush shade. And I, this shade is called, it's called Bury Me Up. I'm just gonna use the same brush. Like the brush isn't wet to touch or anything from that lipstick being on it. So just dipping into that. Another thing I noticed myself doing in my last video, which I never touched on, was the fact that I'm always patting off the excess of my brushes. If you haven't noticed, I'll always tap in and tap off on something. I think that's something that's just come from habit. I'm doing it because I don't want that massive amount of product on my brush and if it might prevent having some fallout. I think I'd rather build products up, slow cook everything, never deep frying. Build up and add more color. You can build up on things, but you can't take it away. So just from what's on my brush, this is already like on the more peachy side, this blush. I think I'm gonna start more on the crease, but on the outer crease. Ooh, yes, that is adding that really cute peachy color to it. And I'm just gonna actually use it to set it, but it's created that beautiful, almost like an eyeshadow base and it's making the blush really pigmented. So I don't think blush would normally act this pigmented. It's meant to be soft. But if you didn't have a blush and you only had the lipstick and you just wanted to set it, I think you could easily really lightly just get your translucent setting powder if you've got it and just on your eyeshadow brush, really lightly tap that on. But I love the way the blush and the lipstick are playing together. That is creating the funnest shade. I love that. And repeat. I am loving this. So I'm going to do the same thing that I spoke about in my last video and just have that clean brush on hand and defuse any harsh lines. Nothing's too harsh because we've been really stippling and really careful about our application. Never hurts to go in there and just defuse things that little bit extra. And like I said, I'm blending really consciously. I'm not just randomly going in there with like a harsh windshield wiper motion that's going to mess up all my work. I'm following the lines that I put down. I'm 
and I'm just diffusing those edges really softly. And only the edges, mind you. I'm not going into where the bulk of the colour is because otherwise I'm just going to be losing that impact of the colour. I'll be washing it out. You want it to fade from bold, well, not always, but in this instance, I want it to go from being a nice, bold, bright pop of pink and fading into that soft pink or into nothing, really. So I'm going to keep this one really simple and I'm going to keep using my blushes. So I'm going to dip into the Viva La Diva again. Um, and this has got these shimmer colours in it. So I think the pop of shimmer in the lid is something I always love to do. Keeps it looking super soft, glowy, almost editorial, high fashion. This one seems to have the most shine in it. So I think I'm gonna go for this one. And I'm using this brush. This brush is from, oh God, it's like rubbed off. I think it's a crown brush. I love crown brush, check them out tapping it off and I'm just going to start in the very center and I think it's the same logic to when I start in the outer corner because I don't mind the sh center of my lid is where I want the most shimmer to be and then to kind of blend into less into the inner corner so if it's too shimmery close to the edge of my eye that's okay so it's playing it safe again Ooh. Oh, I love that. And just dusting it into the inner corner. You can just see how it's added that extra bit of something to my eye. I love that. So I'm going to get my clean brush again and I'm just going to blend in here. I feel like when I was learning, we heard that like shimmer in the crease is a no-no. And I believed that for so damn long. But now, oh, shimmer in the crease. Um, Is she on the cover of Vogue? Excuse me. I love it. Like I still have more depth in my crease, but that little bit of shimmer that comes into it. Oh, the way the light hits. It. I, I'm obsessed with it. I love it. And I think a little bit of shimmer on the crease is okay too for my hooded eye girls. Like when you're looking deadpan on someone, then you still see that little bit of something on your when you're looking at someone. You want to be able to like get the full impact even though you've got hooded eyes. That's just me though. That's a controversial one, I think. I'm just going to finish this look off with a couple of shades from the chocolate bar palette that I really like. You can clearly see that this shade here is a favorite of mine. The shade is Marzipan. It's a beautiful pinky highlighter color. It's a pearly pink color, really. And just on my little brush I used before for my blush shimmer, it's got that nice point on the end of it. So I feel like I've got a bit more control than the other shade of brushes. So I'm just going to dip into Marzipan and I'm just going to dust it really lightly over my brow bone. I might even, I'm going to be crazy. I mean, insane and use that same color on my cheeks and just tap it onto the highest points of my cheeks so then when I smile I've got that same continuity and cohesion from my eyes down onto my cheeks I'm even gonna feel glowy and springtimey even though it's autumn and I'm gonna put a little bit on my inner corner too I love an inner corner highlight here's something I feel very strongly about though for the longest time for the longest I seen girls putting highlighter like in here right? And that's what you think, in a corner, in there, or like over here. No, I feel very strongly that it should go in here and in there. That's where the light's going to hit. If someone's looking at you straight on, they're going to see it there. It makes your eyes look bigger too. You're making your eyes go in more, creating more room for that eye. So the next step I'm going to take again is tight lining, like I've done in my last video. You could again just do a gel eyeliner. This could possibly look really good with like a big wing cat eyeliner. Like you could really do anything. I'm super partial to just tight lining and especially when I'm trying to do something soft and natural, but you could totally dress this look right up with lashes and eyeliner and the works. In the chocolate bar palette, again, I'm going to go for this shade, which is Cherry Cordial. What a cute name. So I'm going to go for Cherry Cordial because I love how it's that beautiful, deep, plum, purple shade that's going to tie in beautifully with the pinks. And it won't be quite as jarring or as harsh as if I went for a black. And like I said, you can use any colour to do this. You could even do like a hot pink, you could do anything. I think ideally dark, create that depth in your lash line, make your lashes look a bit fuller, but any color, seriously, navy blue, emerald green. Wow, that just makes so much difference. It's probably my favorite step. That's when I feel like the look comes together the most when I do that. Perfect. I love that. I think I might do a little bit under my eyes. I'm thinking I might actually dip into that same cherry cordial color. I'm actually going to put it on my waterline. I didn't realize for the longest that you could use eyeshadow on your waterline. It's not super comfortable. It doesn't work great with every color, but like you can do it, which I can't believe that took, took me so long to get. So I'm just going to, with the angled brush again, any small brush will do. Just going to press it onto my water. And I just, I just pat it on because it's obviously a sensitive area. I don't want to be like rubbing it on or I don't know, being too rough with that part of my eye. I love a little bit of something in the waterline. I feel like I neglect that area too much myself, but on my clients, when I started trying to always make sure I put something in the waterline, when I could, I started to notice just how much more sort of polished my work looked. It doesn't have to be black, but 
even like a white or a nude color and i think what i'll do now is i'll just grab my matte um blush shade again from the essence one and i'm just gonna on my same brush i was using before and just really lightly dust it under my eye just to round around like our outer corner to under our eye now that we've smoked out our waterline and i was just kind of using like the edge of the brush if you notice like i feel like if i use the tip of my brush i'm going to get too much product and it's going to be lower if that makes sense um so just by using like the edge of my brush which isn't super comfortable I feel like I've got more control. Like I said, these brushes, like a shader brush like this, I could do whole looks with these. All right, I'm gonna quickly put on some mascara and some lipstick, doing the same thing I did in my last video. So if you haven't watched that yet, go have a look uh, and I'll be right back. All right, so there we have it. I've added some top and bottom mascara with the same Essence um, Get Big Lashes Volume Mascara um, as I did yesterday and just curled them. I'm not about to be out here doing the absolute most and putting on false lashes just to go rip them off while I'm at home. No one sees this. I also put on some lippies, same drill as last video, the Australis Tickled Pink Lipstick. And upon further inspection, I this I didn't say this right yesterday. I, I'm still not going to try again with the name of the colour. That is an evil name. Like, something wrong with me for not being able to say that or is that ridiculous? Uh, it's actually the cover girl, Katie Cat Matt. I think I said Kitty Cat Matt yesterday or something. I don't know. So here it is, the final look. I hope you guys learned something today. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, have some fun at home. Experiment with makeup that you never would have thought to pull out as something different. The trick with the lipstick isn't exclusive to pink. You could do that with your nudes or your reds or anything. So experiment, have some fun, and realize that there are no rules to makeup. You can use any product any brush for anything. All right, thank you guys. I'm going to sign off. Um, probably going to go wash this off and go to bed, but I had so much fun filming this. Thank you. All right, bye guys.